Greetings, mortal, and welcome to my review of Gods. You'd think that somebody with a Bitmap Brothers t-shirt would have nothing but nice things to say about their games. Um, that's not quite the case for Gods. Um, while the game has a lot of style, um, it's a little bit light in the gameplay department. And let me show you what I mean. Um, this game can be horribly cheap. Um, so first off, you have to get the weapon, and then immediately turn left and blast the enemies. And that's kind of the mindset of the entire game. Um, it's one of those games where you have to know pretty much where to go and how to, you know, do the whole level, um, the way the designers envisioned it. Uh, by which I mean they're always throwing things at you where you have very little time to react, especially considering how sluggish your character is. Um, and there are things you can do in the level that will just unfairly kill you, whether it's teleporting onto an enemy or uh, enemies appearing beneath you. Um, I've had a lot of cheap deaths in this. And, you know, it's one of those things where if you've memorized the level and you're going through it a certain way, you won't encounter that. Um, so maybe it's down to a lack of playtesting. Uh, maybe the de developers were just too familiar with their, their own game. <laughs> And um, a lot of what passes for puzzle platforming in this really are just, uh, you know, setting switches to the right positions. You know, in this one you have to uh, set these three switches to the right positions to get rid of that spike that's going up and down. Um, they're, they're not real puzzles and there's a lot of arbitrary stuff that happens where you, know, you might walk into a certain spot in the level and something will fall down that you need to get. This is in stark contrast to their later game, the Chaos Engine, which, you know, I point to as being pretty much everything good about Bitmap Brothers games, and none of the things that really make them uh, tedious or painful to play like this one is. You know, when I was younger, I thought, you know, a good level design is, uh, you know, um, you know, we'll get the player to go here, and when the player goes here, we'll just kill them, and he'll know better next time. Well, guess what? That's actually not fun to play, and it's not really very fair either. You know, like I said, you know, once you kind of memorize the levels, you kind of zip through them, and this is no longer an issue, and it's kind of fun. Um, you know, the graphics are uh, gorgeous. Uh, I love the art style, and the, the ambience, and the atmosphere is just fantastic. Um... But, you know, you take that away, and it's not really good as a puzzle game. It's not really good as a platformer. Um, you know, what, <laughs> I don't know what this game is good for, aside from um, eye candy. I mean, as an example, you know, I kill this guy, and then I go over here. This guy appears. I go back, and boom. Or maybe you didn't predict that you absolutely have to kill that guy to the left, because otherwise you get swamped, and no, you cannot fire and duck. And then you get into situations like this. Yeah. Man, I'm having so much fun right now. And I didn't even show you that, you know, all the camera issues where, you know, you might take a jump onto a ledge and an enemy will kind of, you know, um, be there and kill you. Um, and you didn't see the enemy before you jumped. Um, but yeah, I, I could go on all day about what's wrong with this game. Um, there are reasons to pick it up and play it. So, I already mentioned the graphics, which are beautiful. Um, the weapons are a lot of fun to use. Um, there's a satisfaction in memorizing the level. Um, so, you know, I can't recommend this game, um, but I can see why people uh, like it. And, you know, I'll, I'll you know, probably get some flack for this review, because it's one of those beloved Amiga games. Uh, you know, it was scoring, you know, 90% you know, in magazines when it came out, you know, with people saying, oh my god, this is the best platformer I've ever played, and, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of these Amiga games really suffer from, uh, you know, style over substance, 
Um, and it was easy to do at the time because the Amiga was so far ahead of other platforms um, much of the time. Um, where, you know, people were playing, you know, NES or, you know, four-color IBM PC games, and, you know, then you get this. You know, you're like, oh my god, look at all these colors, and, uh, you know, fully 16-bit. Um, and then, you know, you forget that the game isn't really all that great. Um, and, you know, as years pass and graphics get better, uh, it's easier, I guess, now to look at these and be like, yeah, these, uh, these really, uh, aren't that good. Um, not to say there aren't great games on the Amiga, like I said, um, you know, go play the Chaos Engine instead. Um, there's a handful of games I really like on that system, um, that I feel, uh, stand the test of time very well. Um, this just, is just one of them. Um, worth mentioning is every two levels you get a shop, and, um, you know, on the first one, be sure to buy these things, um, and get three of them. Um, if you don't power up right in this game, uh, you get really hosed. Um, yeah, it, very much in line with the game's philosophy. Now let's talk about the port to the Super Nintendo. Um, you've been watching mostly Super Nintendo footage. Um, and here's the Amiga one. This is the original that you're watching now. Um, you know, you might notice there's no background music. Um, the color's a little bit more muted. Uh, the, the Super Nintendo one has a very strange bluish tint to everything. I, I think they kind of messed up the colors. Um, the more subdued look actually, you know, makes it so that the sprites match the background and all that good stuff. Um, and I, I like the uh, sky a lot more in this one. In the background, um, the Super Nintendo one has this parallax, but the, um, you know, I don't know if you want to call it depth cueing, um, but, uh, you know, the background is about the same color as the foreground, um, so it's sometimes even hard to tell if you're about to jump onto a platform or not. Um, it's a, kind of a sloppy port in some ways. In some ways it's better. Um, it's more fluid. Uh, it has background music, which is uh, really nice and fits the game well. Um, I, I might even go for the Super Nintendo one over the Amiga original, but it does have its shortcomings as well. So that's Gods. Um, you know, a game that in my opinion has not aged well, but uh, you might want to give it a shot and see what you think for yourself. Because some people really do like this game. Um, there's a bunch of fan sites, um, and, you know, and like I said, uh, might be worth experiencing just for the um, art and kind of the unique things that this game has to offer. Um. Meanwhile, I'm going to show that Gods isn't immortal. <laughs>